I know maintaining, understanding, and keeping good financial records and systems in your business is not my favorite thing either. Actually, I hate it. It's probably one of the things that I would say is a weakness, but it can't be. So if you are new in business, if you're trying to grow your business, or if you're really getting started in your business, you need to understand how and when to set up the right financial structures, including the all famous financial software that can change the game. I am so excited to be talking today to an IRS certified bookkeeper and accountant who will be working with you to teach you everything you know to have good financial softwares, systems, and processes. Are you ready? Because we got some good stuff for you today. Let's get to work. All right, guys, today I'd like to welcome to the CPTV studios, Mariette Martinez, the founder of Master Your Books, a learning center and collaborative community that serves value-driven service professionals that are ready to build their financial confidence, knowledge, and impact from the inside out. Mariette has been supporting small businesses for over 20 years as an SMB financial and tax accountant advisor. She is an IRS enrolled agent and and QuickBooks certification trainer and speaker and has received numerous awards, including the 2015-2016 Hub Docs, Top 50 Cloud Accounts, and a 2015 Intuit Top 20 Firms of the Future Award. Marriott believes that bookkeeping is the most intimate relationship in business, and I have to tell you, I agree with that. And she become, and she has become a wonderful business bestie for yours truly as well. So without further ado, let's welcome to our studios, Mariette Martinez. Woo! Hi everyone. Oh my gosh. I just need to get this out. I actually got it out on an Instagram reel before this, but I still need to get it out. I'm so excited. So CP, you have been a mentor. You have been an amazing CEO boss woman for me for so many years. And so let me just share how excited I am so I can kind of like be able to balance my energy. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. So thank you for having me here. I agree. There's people in this world that you can literally become a bestie overnight. I already felt that connection with you, CP, through all your videos. Um, but we just finished a boot camp together a few weeks ago, sure, your goal yeah. getters boot camp. And I'm obsessed with goal getting and goal <laughs> setting. So when I saw you did that, it was like no brainer. I cleared my schedule to be with you. Um, and, you know, I think it's just magic ever since. Oh my God. I can't even tell you that you're absolutely right. That energy, that connection, and not just necessarily between just the two of us, um, but also that same passion and vision and mission driven work that we do to help entrepreneurs. I mean, I think that we connected on that level as well, because our beliefs around entrepreneurship, um, small business growth and development, I think are kind of like on point. So I am so excited to have you here. I appreciate you give me so much love all the time. Um, you like, you're like, I've been watching CB. TV since the beginning. So I'm so excited to have you here. And I'm really excited to dive in because, you know, entrepreneurs, you know how we roll. They see me rolling. They hate it. Um, especially when we're getting started or even after we've been doing it for a while, we don't really know what is enough money to start like keeping the proper books. And you know that I'm always like, oh no, from day one, like before you even make your first dollar, you need to have your financial structures, your financial systems in place. Otherwise you'll never be able to grow. So I cannot wait to pick your amazing expert brain and bring some real true knowledge to this family. Because if you are an entrepreneur out there and you have been, let's just say, uh, slacking, Slacking is the best word I can think of. Slacking <laughs> on your bookkeeping because you don't know what to do. You don't know when you should do it. You don't know how to do it. Today is the episode for you. So I'm ready to dive in and get started with question number one, which I think is going to be really integral for everybody. So can you tell us about your experience working with entrepreneurs um, as a bookkeeper and, and how you really got started in focusing on the small business um, and the entrepreneur, especially the startup entrepreneur, or at least I should say the entrepreneur that are trying to get into that next level growth kind of stage. Tell us a little bit about 
some funny stories maybe, but also <laughs> when, when you did this, how did you do this? What made you decide yeah, to do this? There's so many stories, but yeah. And it's one that, it, uh, that I use a lot because it really does build into everything. I think we're going to talk about today. So I come from a lineage, literally a line of women entrepreneurs. My grandmother immigrated from Mexico with 12 children, one of them being my mother, and she was a seamstress in her village. So she was an entrepreneur in the early 1900s. She immigrated from Mexico with her kids and all 12 of her, of her kids, so of my aunts and uncles, all chose entrepreneurship. Wow. So some other people were talking about, you know, different types of table discussions. We were talking about business, like <laughs> opening a business, you know, sustaining a business, paying your employees, all of that stuff. That was literally our dinner conversation, not only in our own home, because my mom owned a chain of restaurants for 30 years, but also when I'd go visit my family, like that's what we talked about. They had restaurants, they had real estate, um, they own different types of businesses. And so, so that's all I knew, which is interesting. So literally because- in your blood. That's it. Literally, literally in, in my DNA. blood. It's probably in your DNA. Like in I that, think so. that whole thing, if you've ever seen that DNA thing, it's in there. Yours is in there. Like entrepreneur. Gotcha. It's in there. And so, and I love sharing that story because over the last 20 plus years, as I've transitioned from an accountant, you know, I went the typical route. I would say I went to school, I graduated in accountancy, I worked big firm, then I went to a national firm, and then I opened my own firm. So that's kind of a, a, a trajectory that many accountants go through. But what I realized when I met my peers, that many of them didn't have entrepreneurship history. So they were very practical. They were practitioners, but they didn't understand the actual entrepreneur. And so many times it was kind of a shock because we would sit down and we talk about how do you speak to your clients? How do you build a relationship with your clients? How do you empower your clients? And they were very linear. Yeah, I tell them that they have to do their books and I tell them they have to get QuickBooks and I tell them they have to, you know, do a, a general ledger and a trial balance. And I'm like, who are you saying that to? Because they don't understand what you're saying. They don't use that language. Entrepreneurs don't know what that means. Like they don't understand the language yet. They understand the language of making money, dinero. Right. Like, like, dinero. Boots yes. on the ground, dinero. Like my grandma would always say, she'd always tell us, I que said dinero. You cannot live without money. It's energy. Energy and money go together. You know, that's what entrepreneurs speak. That's their language. And so I saw very clearly a disconnect between the accountants that were very, you know, practice business driven and didn't have an entrepreneur background. And me, or when I would sit in front of a business owner, many times after five minutes, Cheryl, if I would see deer in the headlights, I'd say, you know what? Let's back up. We are not going to talk about QuickBooks. We're not going to talk about taxes. I just need you to tell me what does your day look like from beginning to day, from beginning when you wake up to the night. I want you to let me live in your boots of your contractor, in your heels of your real estate agent, like, you know, in in your salon, if you have a barbershop, like let me live a day in your life. And that's all we would talk about. That would literally be our first meeting is I would get quiet and I'd let them tell me their life and I'd live through them. And then we'd go back and have a discussion about bookkeeping and accounting and taxes. So that was a big thing for me is that my you language know, is very different. The fact that you said that it, it just brings home, actually, it's absolutely true. My accountant um, and even my bookkeeper and I, we have a great relationship because they understand my business. And because they understand my business and what my average day is like, they are able to help me strategize on what I need my books to look like. Because one of the things that I tell everybody all the time is there is no like cookie cutter bookkeeper (laughs) record of accounts in QuickBooks. They'll give you something to start with, but you will customize that to what you need to see as the CEO of your own business in order to be able to make decisions because the finances lead to, to make decisions by the numbers. Right. And so over the years, like every year, my, my record of account, my account chart of accounts, that's what it's called. The chart yeah, of account, account. It's yes. looks, it changes because yeah. I add products or I remove products or I've added expenses or I've done renovations on the office or I've purchased equipment. And I need to see the numbers differently every single year, especially if I've added streams of income. And so as I've added a stream, my books have changed. And the only way that I'm able to 
know that is because my bookkeeper and my accountant at the end of every year, when we have our big like end of the year meeting and we start talking about what we want to do, we strategize. We literally have a strategy meeting. And because they know my business and they've asked the questions that you just mentioned, they are able to make suggestions to me. They're able to yeah. say, okay, because I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the language, right? So they're like, we want to see this. Let's add this. Let's do this. Let's do some coding. Let's do some tags. Let's let's yes. add this. So we don't have to create new stuff. And that girl is absolutely amazing. So there aren't very many of you out there. So it is exciting to hear that you yes. are getting your co co colleagues and co colleagues. Into, and I want to share something that you said because I don't want us to lose that moment of what you said when you said that you meet with a bookkeeper and an accountant for your year end, or maybe quarterly. Sometimes you do that to just make sure y'all are on the same. Yeah, uh, we meet, we meet yeah you're on the same page. We meet quarterly. And then at the end of the year, we have the big strategy meeting. Yeah. The big strategy meeting. Now yeah. here's what I want to point out though, because this is probably one of the most common questions I get from a business owner, whether they're early stage, which, you know, Cheryl and I love to say early stage when it's like, okay, you're just beginning or sometimes you are not just beginning, but you're beginning to figure it out. Like you're yeah. beginning to realize like, this is legit. Yeah. This isn't a side hustle, right? So let's just talk at that little you're stage. You're at that six figure mark. That, that yes, say, six figure mark. Exactly. And you and I have kind of, we we, we banged our heads together to figure yeah, out what the stages are. But I would say like zero to 100K is that early stage, right? Yeah. And then once you get to like 100K, Plus you're in growth stage. You're yeah. at the point now where your money can start hurting you if you aren't doing it right. And exactly. that's when you really need to be like, you definitely need to be getting yourself together. And it's going to take a little bit more time if you wait till then. So that's why I say early, early, zero dollars, do it now. Yes. Because if you wait too long, it's going to be hell. Trying yes. to get fixed. No, 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 you're right. And both of the thing is, what I love is that if you are an early stage and you learn this now, you will have a better transition to growth stage. So here it is. So Cheryl just said it, but I want to pull it back real quick, everybody. So when you're thinking about getting getting um, engaged, creating relationships, and being served by an accounting professional, this is critical, everyone. You've got your bookkeeper. Your bookkeeper is the one that literally is in the grind with you. They are in the hole. They are in the pit. They're, they are living that day-to-day -day life with you. Sometimes they meet with you weekly, definitely at least you know uh, a couple times a month. They really know your business. Now you have an accountant. An accountant is usually someone like me. You know, we went to school. We have many, many years in this profession, but we're more high level. We're more CFO, right? We just want to make sure that we're, we're checking the boxes and we're supporting the business owner, in this example, CP, and we're supporting the bookkeeper who is, again, doing the grind, doing the daily work. And so that's why if we meet less than every quarter, we're losing too many things. We're missing gaps. And we're actually, sadly, we're not serving the business owner because there's strategies that we could have taken throughout the year. So that's your financial accountant. Now, towards the end of the year, that same financial accountant could also be a tax professional, meaning they do taxes, right? So at the end of the year, many people are asking or looking for a CPA, which is a certified public accountant. It just means you're certified by the state. You have a state license or an enrolled agent, which means you're licensed by the Internal Revenue Service, the U.S. Treasury Department. That's what makes you a tax expert. I'm an enrolled agent, so I'm an IRS enrolled agent. So at the end of the year, that accountant that you may have already may do taxes. Here's the big problem, guys. Not all accountants do taxes, okay? You can't assume just because you have an accountant, you're like, I'm taking care of, I'm compliant, I'm doing my quarterly taxes, I'm doing my annual taxes. No, you need to ask your accountant, do you also do taxes? Because there's times that they don't want to do taxes because they're very good at that high level strategic financial services. Again, that CFO, that chief financial officer, they're playing that role in your business because maybe you haven't skilled enough to have a CFO in your business. So they're playing the outsourced CFO. You have a bookkeeper, but they don't want to do your taxes. So guys, you have to remember, you need to add somebody else to the team. Now you have to ask a tax professional that is on the team with the bookkeeper, that's on the team with the accountant, and that's a tax professional. And that's where so many people get mixed up because they're like, wait, I'm so confused. I thought my accountant does that. Did you ask your accountant if they do that? Because they may, number one, not do it. And here's the biggest thing, not want to do it. Because there are many accountants, CPAs are, are one of them that I know because they're my colleagues. They tell me all the time, Marriott, people just assume I do taxes. I don't want to do taxes. 
I want to do high level. I don't want to do taxes. You know, yeah, they want to be like the strategist, the CFO. Yes, and they want to be the CFO. You don't want to have three people, three financial people on your team, as you've just described. Then when you are looking for your financial team members, when you are sourcing those out, then like you said, you have to ask those questions. You yes. have to say, are you going to be, are you CFO minded? And, and and I went through, I learned very early on because my very first bookkeeper, my very first accountant, they absolutely sucked. I didn't do any interviewing. I didn't do any interviewing. I just got a recommendation from somebody called them and was like, Hey, can I become your client? And of course they're like, yes, I had no idea what they were supposed to be doing, what they weren't doing well. And then, like you said, I became came dissatisfied a couple years in and was like, okay, CP, I know you avoided accounting all through college and you were just praying to the Lord that you would get a C. I know you hate all things finance because I did, but you have to educate yourself enough to know in order to replace these people. Cause I was at a point where I knew I wanted to replace them, but I didn't know how. Yes. And I put together kind of a scope of work, the same thing I do now for any vendor that I'm working with in my business. I put together a scope of work with some specific like bullet points of what I was looking for and some questions to ask. So they, yes. they went through kind of an interviewing process until I found like my perfect match that fit me really well. And I'm lucky that my accountant is very CFO minded. So he's always on me about strategy. He'll like reach out to me and be like, girl, uh, what, what's all this coming in over here? What's this? We, we need, we need to rethink this. Like, you know, and, and then he also does my taxes. Cause then at the end of that, he's like, okay, hun. Uh, yeah, we need, you didn't say anything about uh, expanding, adding a whole room on the office. Like, where was that at? I'm like, oh yeah, that just came up. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, that scope of work. So that's a great tip. I mean, we weren't even supposed to be getting into this in this conversation. Yeah, no. Like it might be a whole different video that we could that we could do too. <laughs> like what to look for in, yes. in, in, in your financial team is an amazing girl. I'm writing that down. It's an amazing. If you guys want us to do a video later on, we won't, we won't spend too much time on that here because I want to get into how to set up your books and all that kind of good stuff. But if you guys think, and if you need to, do, if you want to see a video about kind of what to look for, the steps to looking for your financial team, put it down, put um financial team in the comments below and we'll get on it. We, yeah. we will get on it. We, we will yeah, I want to close that for you, CP, because I know we need to go on the next one. And I just want, I loved your example. And if we do another video on this, if you share that you want it, I love this concept of you creating a, a uh, I don't know if you want to call it a questionnaire or a survey or some type of kind of standard or scope of what you want your team to look like. And the reason why I'm going to say this is that when I ask people when they first engage with me, when they engage with me for you know over 20 years as a practitioner, I would ask them, well, what did you want this relationship to look like? Many times they were like, wait, what do you mean? You mean I can interview you? And I'm <laughs> like, well, yeah, don't you want this to be a like a two-way engagement? Like I want to be who you believe I am, or at least I'll build into those expectations. I want you as my client to be what I want because I know who my ideal client is, right? right? And so many times the business owner, and so these are for you business owners that are watching, don't be afraid to interview your business partners, your attorneys, your accountants, your bookkeepers, your insurance partners, like you are the CEO, you are literally giving them business. And so you can interview them and say, hey, this is the scope of what I want our relationship to look like. And then let them say, I don't do that. Okay, well, then do you know someone that does? Because this is what I want from my yeah. business relationship. Like, don't be afraid to do that. So CP, that would be kind of fun if we created like, yeah. here's the scope of work yeah. for your bookkeeper, your accountant. I'm sure I still have it. I could pull it out, but I create them for every single vendor because they are, they are employees. I mean, in essence, they may be contracted, but you're right. adding to your team. You're adding to your staff. You're adding to your team. So scope of work, even for my, for my web designers, they, they, they think I'm all nuts. I'm like, okay, the three of you, I'm going to interview <laughs> you. Yeah. We got to go through an interviewing process. Like, what do you know about my business? Like, have you checked out yes. my YouTube channel? They're like, uh, uh, I'm like, oh, thank you so much for your time today. Like, <laughs> like bye right. bye. Right. So let's talk about the mistakes, yeah. right? Some common mistakes that you have seen um, entrepreneurs do and make when they're setting up their financials for the first time. And, and, and what do you recommend that entrepreneurs can do? Like maybe your top two things, or maybe even yeah. your number one, or maybe your top three to avoid these mistakes. So what are the common mistakes that you see and what should they 
what should everybody be doing to avoid them? Yeah, I love that question. It actually ties in perfectly to what we were just saying. So one of the most common, mis not even it's a mistake, I really believe a lot of what we're going to talk about today is not being aware, right? No one actually ever just breaking it down like CP does. Like there's not a lot of people out there that just break it down. So here is the breakdown. When you think about accounting and setting up your bookkeeping system or your managing your money system or your financial software system, by the way, it's all the same, okay? You're basically getting the data in, you're transferring it and transforming it into dollars and those dollars is how you make decisions off your business. That's pretty much all it is, right? But what you have to understand now is who are the money players in the business, okay? Sadly, and I'm gonna be straight out and I'm actually gonna even show you a visual on this, Sadly, many times we think we're the only player. We're the CEO. We do everything in the business. By the way, you started the business. Awesome. Congratulations. But you got to pull yourself out because to have a legitimate business, there are other money players in the business. Okay. This may be either a solely owned business or there may be other business partners or members or owners. So you guys got to separate yourself so you can have a legitimate business. That's money player number one. Okay. Money player number two. You got to have customers, okay? You got to have people wanting to buy from you, right? Like yes. you hopefully have to have customers. So those are money players number two. They're well, I would, I guess let's money. call them money player 1A. A oh, 1A, okay. <laughs> right? right? Yeah, because they're exactly. as important as you, sometimes more important than you, right? Yeah. You no, know, seriously, you're absolutely right, right? And it also legitimizes whether your business even is a business because you got no customers. Sorry, guys, you have something else going on, right? Yeah, so, hobby. Yeah. I always call it a hobby. You have, yeah, you have yeah. I mean, that's a what hobby. A very expensive hobby. Exactly. <laughs> so you got your customers, they're sending you money. So as soon as you realize that, now you got to create systems for how you're going to bring in the money. And I know CP, you got some great videos on that. So now guess what? There's a third player. Okay. We've already mentioned them. Those are your vendors. Those are the people that you're actually bringing into your business. They're serving you. You're buying from them materials, supplies, or maybe services because they're contractors. So now you got to pay out, right? You got to pay money out. How is that money system working? Okay. Yeah. And now you have another big player. And this is the one I always get pushed back. I'm a solopreneur. I'm all by myself. And I'm like, really? There's nobody else that's helping you. Like, how about me? I'm a consultant. I'm helping you. So you're not by yourself. So you got this whole team of other players, your business partners, your accountants, your bookkeepers, your, your consultants, your coaches, the organizations that are helping you. Your spouses, you, right? Your spouse. Your spouse. Okay. <laughs> your spouse, if, they, if they're exactly. like, if they're like telling you, no, we you don't do that because we don't have the money right now or yeah. go to there work you go. or get a real job. <laughs> they're, they're no, 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 it's too. true, right? Yeah, you yeah. have this whole other one. So what I do when I teach this, by the way, and again, we'll, we'll show you a visual is that I, I pull out all those players and I show you very clearly that the business is in the middle, but remember all of those other players need a way for money to move in and out. And once you understand that everybody, seriously, like once it's like, <laughs> I figured it out, then you realize, oh crap, how am I gonna do that? Yeah. And that's when you wake up and realize you need a system. That's when you realize you need a system. Yeah. So is that the mistake that you see people just not realizing because we, we even experienced it even in the boot camp where people are almost every single person was like, well, yeah, I need to get my financials together. I'm like, how are you functioning in business? If that isn't your number one priority, like literally in the steps to starting a business, you guys know, I give you six steps and in that official set up your business structure that getting your email and getting your address and, and getting your tax ID and getting your LLC in that same step is setting up your financial structure so that yeah. you can have a money in, you can have a money out and you can keep track of what's going yes. on. Otherwise you'll never get to that next level. Now, if it's just a side gig and you're just doing this to kind of build a nest egg or to play for family vacation, that's one thing, but that's not who we're talking about, right? That's, we're talking, not, yeah. that's not who we're talking to. We're talking to you out there who tell us and tell me every single day that you want to grow a multi-million dollar business. You want to grow a multi six figure business. If that's what you want to do and you haven't set up your financial structure, you're behind. You mm -hmm. got to push pause, get your notebook out right now, because this is a video and a couple of other ones that we have in our library where you need to begin to set that up. Do not 
skimp on this piece. I can literally not make decisions if I don't have books kept properly. And well, I want to, I, I, get- I want, I want to say something real quick. Cause I don't want you to lose that thought. No. You just gave that example of all the things, get an email, get a website, get all that. Right. So here, I want to ask y'all, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put you all on the spot here. Right. What did you pay for that? Did you pay with your own personal funds? You're already not acting as a legitimate business. Correct. Oh! You have right? pierced the corporate veil, my <laughs> darling. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and no, even if you, yeah, and here's the biggest, again, I, I like to give actual challenges or pain points or pushbacks that I get from business owners after all these years. Yeah, but do you mean I really have to go and get a business account? And I go, okay, to be honest, the answer is yes. Okay. But if you are just so resistant to that, then at least open a personal account that has zero dollars in it, transfer money in there, maybe a hundred bucks, 500 bucks, and only use that account legitimate for this new gig you have. Because right. at least that way, that is somewhat of a bit bookkeeping system. Um, but you really should have a business bank account if you want to formalize a business. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. So, all right. So let's let's talk about. Oh, and guys, if this is already good for you and you are loving it and you're already getting value, please make sure that you step down below, leave us a comment and say, oh yeah, but also like, subscribe and share. All right. Don't forget, hit that like button. It totally helps out. All right, y'all, that conversation got so good that I wanted to break this up into two parts. Otherwise, the video was going to be long. But the value of the content is so critical, especially if you are a newbie entrepreneur and you really need to understand the importance of having the right financial team. So I'm going to stop this right here. We're going to take a little bit of a breather. I want you to write all your questions and comments below and questions that you have so that me me and Mariette can get together again and kind of formulate a new plan because this is a huge topic, I know, for a lot of you. And make sure that you stay tuned to, for part two next week where we will dive even further into setting up the system and the structures. Because today, I think we talked about the team and some ideas around the team. And next week, we're going to talk about for you how to get this done. All right? So I will see you guys again next week for part two. Until next time, my loves. Bye-bye. Mwah!